Denzel, thank you very much for giving us this time, this moment, um, for us to understand and get to know who you are. Absolutely. Um, the concept of what we do at My Come Office is about, it's really about breaking down this definition of success. I think okay. people tend to see people, whether they're on the big screen or whether they're successful financially, and just kind of look at the outcome as opposed to the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think they allow the outcome to separate them from thinking they're capable because they feel that the trajectory was quite simple or, or is simple. So right. our goal is to really to have a conversation and dialogue to kind of understand your journey, um, breaking down how and, and you know what you're doing to fuel yourself along the way, or what you've uh, had to overcome to obviously get to this position, but at the same mm -hmm. time to really you know be an inspiration because I think a lot of us aren't sharing the, the journey enough for people to understand that it's okay to go through the ups and downs as well as to face um, as, as, you, as you know yourself you're in Hollywood rejection or whether it's um, you know having to, to push yourself to, to, to look for greater or to be greater right and just kind of share that dialogue so it's more of a conversation it's not there's no right or wrong answer there's no okay there's no real um, structure it's just a fluid conversation absolutely um, for us to kind of understand you so the first question I have is sure um, you grew up in California right yeah yeah born and raised uh, born and raised in LA I I uh, was born in Torrance, you know, spent five years in Carson. And then at the, around the age of five, uh, my parents and I, we moved up to Palos Verdes, you know, with my sister uh, and my brother still stayed in Carson. So pretty much my entire life was, was living, uh, I guess you could say in a very rich white neighborhood. Wow. Yeah. So tell me a bit more about, you know, growing up in Palisades. How, how did that mold and develop? Um, so growing up in Palos Verdes was interesting. Uh, growing up while being black in Palos Verdes was interesting. Because, you know, I remember like the first year being there, being followed in the aisles of the grocery store. Just simply going to TJ Maxx when I was buying a pair of socks. And I remember I wanted to try on like some shorts, I think. And they sit there and count all of the items. You know, they're always curious because they don't necessarily know what to do with black and Pals Verdes. And as I got older uh, and, and got to high school and middle school, you know, I started to identify with the other black people who were up there, whether they lived on the hill or whether they came up to the hill. Um, but I remember like one of the most prominent uh, experiences I had while growing up was when I was like in second, third grade and I was being bullied. And I couldn't understand why I was being bullied, but I was simply being bullied just because I was different. And, you know, my parents had instilled within me early on that you're black. Uh, so you always got to be mindful of that. But obviously when you're like seven, eight, you know, in elementary school, what does that really mean to you? So um, <clears throat> I remember being bullied and I told my mom and she was furious. And then little instances like that just kept happening throughout uh, my childhood while going to school. In and of itself, racism started to become like Teflon to me. It started to slide off because it was like, all right, you hear one racist remark, but that doesn't identify with me. I was like the first black president they've ever had in my middle school. You know, and as like funny or, or as small of an accomplishment that may sound like, I was the first black president they ever had in the 2000s. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I, I keep a very diverse group. I hang with like pretty much anybody. And it was only until high school that I really realized like, oh, you can start identifying with your race and start hanging with your own race and like understanding what your heritage is. So that was what my experience like was growing up is it just kept me very diverse. And now in the game of acting or in the game of entertainment, you know, you've got to be diverse. You got to work with all different sort of walks of life. So Pals Verdes in and of itself prepared me for that. And it also prepared me to not take shit so personal. I feel like that's the generation of kids now versus like, you know, maybe my parent generation or my grandparent generation or whatnot. Like racism for them was so personal because it was right there happening to them. It's still happening to us, but we're a little bit 
removed from the slavery that they experienced just a couple of generations ago, you know? So hopefully we could keep pushing that hopeful mindset forward. So with all of this happening, it sounds very, well, it sounds very overwhelming to, to deal with at that age, clearly because identifying with who we are, let alone what people perceive us of is, is perceive us of is very um, conflicting. Right. How did you manage to find um, direction in that? My parents. Um, my parents and it's interesting, like I didn't identify with my blackness till much later in my life. You know, my parents um, keep me very humble and grounded in that regard. And you know, when I'd visit my family members who live in impoverished areas or live in lower income areas that aren't Palos Verdes, you know, you go back and you're, and you're kind of just reminded of your skin color, whether you go to or return. Um, and so I think that was always a reminding thing, but my parents really were like, stand tall, be proud. And then on the flip side of that, again, I stopped identifying with a lot of it because it was like, these are just my friends. I enjoy hanging out with them. The people who are bullying me, now I identified why you bully me, so fuck you. And then as I got older, it was like, oh, okay, well, really, what is my blackness about? Because I was always hanging with the white kids. So anytime people would call me like the whitest black kid they ever knew, that's all I got identified as, as the whitest black kid I'd ever know. Because, you know, I decided to enunciate my words. I wasn't afraid to be smart. I wasn't afraid to dress how I wanted to dress. I wasn't afraid to be the stereotype that everybody wanted me to be. And so once I got to high school, then I started battling what was the stereotype. And the black kids would look at me and they were like, well, why don't you hang with us? And I was almost afraid of my own blackness. So I just kind of identified with that uh, much later on. I'm not sure if I even answered your question, to be honest with you, but it was just, it was just an evolution of myself, I guess you could say, is that I never let race become me. And now I'm just proud of it. And taking that situation, uh, mm -hmm. dealing with identity, steering more towards the talent side, the, 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 the acting, the creativity, the inspiration, where did that start to come into to play for yourself? The way I jumped into um, acting was very different because it's, inter it's, it's funny living in one of the hubs of entertainment for the film industry and not necessarily being involved in it. You know, Pals Verdes is like an hour removed. So randomly, you know, I just get a phone call or my parents get a phone call that a relative had signed me up uh, to go to an acting workshop. And my mom asked me, do you want to do that? And I, I said, sure, you know, I, I could be like one of the kids on Nickelodeon, you know? Uh, so we go to the acting workshop and mind you, I was a very shy child growing up, super shy, um, like hiding behind my mom, like not wanting to barely say hi, just kind of being to myself and involved in literally just my books or my stories or whatever my imagination would take me. So I, I didn't know how to open up to people. Uh, acting was just an outlet for me to simply start expressing myself. Like I recently told my dad this and my dad didn't even know this about me. And he was shocked to find out that acting was the only way that I felt like I could start to become myself by being other characters. Um, and I'm thankful for that because acting really sort of fell in my lap. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to draw, uh, I wanted to be a cartoon artist. My dad wanted me to be a mechanical engineer. You know, I was always, something involved in creativity, but I never knew what that would be. So acting was a way for me to vocally and outright express myself, to break that shy barrier. Uh, it was really my blessing. Who, who would have knew? Like, who would have knew, A, that the first time I performed in, some, in front of somebody, I would have just, like, blacked out. That's what, that's what happened. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what the character was. I just remember doing a character 
And then afterwards, people like clapping and going up to my mom and they're like, wow, we love him, blah, blah, blah. We want to sign him up. Whether it was all hype or whatnot because it ended up being a scam, I felt something. I don't remember what it was, but I felt something. And that's how I knew like that was, oh shit, I'm aligning myself with something that, that I kind of enjoy. And later on in life, I just kept enjoying it and enjoying it. And now these are my troops. Like this is what I was put on this earth to do was to move people. That's what I'm awaking myself up to right now. It found me. At the end of the day, she don't pay my bills. The people that I hang out with don't pay my bills. Those may be interactions, but now I gotta provide for myself. I think the biggest and the scariest investment I ever made was buying my house because it put a pattern in my back and it's like, nigga survive.